Hello guys, <laughs> David Booth here. Well, hope you're having a wonderful day. Guys, I want to show you something. I wrote, I went to the Goggle Brothers platform here and I wrote in Errol Musk's worth. That's Elon Musk's dad. And I was expecting it to say something like a few million or something, I don't know. But it said, Errol Musk has been the subject of criticism due to unorthodox or unscientific stances and highly publicized controversies. With his hard work and talent, he has self-earned a net worth of around 200 billion United States dollars. And I read that and I thought, well, that's ridiculous because that's about how much his son has. His son had up almost to 300 billion for a while, but it's gone back down. And the other guys like Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, supposedly their money's gone down. And I, of course, believe, inserting this here, because I've got a whole bunch more to say about this $200 billion, but I don't believe that Bill Gates has lost money, or Jeff Bezos, or Elon Musk has lost 80, 100, whatever, how many billion dollars over the last few years. I think they've gained money. Remember... Bill Gates bought up a bunch of pharmaceutical stuff before the whole thing, the thingy thing. So I would imagine that all of his profit is going somewhere else. Remember, he's got a big foundation where he can just put excess money into his foundation, the Bill and Gates, Melinda, Mc, you know, whatever foundation. So maybe that doesn't count as his personal money. I don't know how that works, but something's going on there. Um, they're not losing money. So they could... Any of these people, I mean, Bill Gates could have more money than Elon with all of the thingy thing, you know, that he invested in and all the biotechnology and stuff that I'm sure has skyrocketed biotechnology since that time because of all this that's been going on. So I, I don't believe that. But as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, I don't know if I can believe this because nobody told me that his dad, Errol Musk, had $200 billion because that would place him in well, pretty much the richest person in the world right right next to his son. That would put him above Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. So that didn't make sense to me. <clears throat> and um, so I clicked on it. You see the, the, the link right there? I clicked on that and look at what it does. Well, you know what? This time it didn't do that. When I clicked on it the first time, it was some sort of a virus or something. So, okay. Maybe it doesn't do that every time then. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I don't know. It stopped doing it. Oh, well. So, now, I thought, well, I'm going to get a second opinion. Because, you know, it's right on the front. The first thing you write, and you know that there's algorithms. And they let you see what they want you to see. People pay to put themselves on the top of the list when you write or you're searching for something in the search engine. People will pay, I'm sure they pay big money to go to be on the first of the list that pops up. So whoever's doing this, you'll have to take my word for it. They've got some sort of a virus going on and there's false information about his net worth because it's not 200 billion. But then I thought, okay, let me get another opinion. And I, wrote, and I went down to the next link, Errol Musk Net Worth 2022. And I clicked on that. And it tells about his life. And it says his net worth is $2 million. Well, I thought that's interesting. Instead of $200 billion, now it's just $2 million. And that sounded more correct but still that sounds low i doubt whether the richest man's dad the richest person in the world his dad i i doubt he only has two million so i thought all right let's check another one out you know somewhere we're gonna get to the bottom of this right so i checked i clicked on this third one it says net worth by the time he had retired from his work, he already had earned more than enough money, besides having a net worth of $20 million. And I thought, well, okay. 
something's going on here because the first one that was put into the Goggle Brothers search engine to come up first said 200 billion. The second one said 2 million and now this one's 20 million. So there's a theme going on here. Every one of them, they don't have some change at the end like 205 million or in 36 cents or anything. It's just 200 million, all zeros. The other one's just 2 million and now this one's just 20 million. So I'm sure that they're skewing the results. Now, why is this important, friends? Because if Google can skew the results on how much money this man has, and we can easily see that they've done it not just in one place, but they've done it in three different links, and every time it's got the, the number two and some zeros. They just made it up. So why, why then would they not make up anything? Whatever you look up on Google, whatever it might be, let's say you want to know how far a star is from Earth. Well, it's going to have whatever they decide it is. They just make stuff up. So if you wanted to say, uh, well, have we gone to the moon? Well, they're going to tell you yes, because that's the, the lie they want you to believe. This has been going on for years and years. Books, you pick up a book and you read it, it tells you what they want you to know. You know, this is just everywhere you look. Uh, the other day we were talking about that book that was going rampant through the Truther Network. Everybody was talking about I I made a video on it or two about this book that says that Trump would be the last president. He would have a... Uh, it was written in 1800, they told us. And so it's prophecy, and they knew beforehand. And there would be riots, and he'd have a tower on the Fifth Avenue, and his son would be named Baron, and all of this. Well, it turns out that's a big fraud. There's no proof that that book was ever published until recently. It's just, they just made it up and made it look like it was there. So they may also be doing the same thing with the Elon Musk thing because uh, that uh, Von Braun guy had written a book. The guy came over in Paperclip who was an uh, aerospace uh, expert. Obviously, he looks exactly like Elon Musk. We talked about that the other day. He's probably related. But, um, In his book that he wrote, like a novel, he talks about a space expedition to Mars. Well, it's funny because Von Braun was actually responsible. Uh, he had up the whole deal of trying to get us to the moon, which turns out I don't think ever happened. It was a Hollywood set. It was staged. It was made in Hollywood. It, whether they actually went or not, we'll never know. I really doubt whether they ever did. But now his great-great-grandson, Elon Musk, who's inherited all this wealth because he was from the German aristocratic oligarchy or whatever, the royal bloodlines of Bavaria, has billions of dollars today. These are the people that created all these businesses like Monsanto and, and, and DuPont and the chemicals and, and, and the, the, you know, the pharma companies and stuff. And they keep all this wealth in the family and they just appoint their children as CEOs of big businesses like they did Bill Gates and, 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 and all the others, like the Goggle Brothers and the Worker Worker Burger Worker. So they're all in a family group. They're told when they get a certain age what they're going to do. I don't know if they take them to some sort of place where they test them for what they'd be good at or whatever. But many of these billionaire people become movie stars. Many of them become politicians. Some of them become CEOs, get control of large businesses. But it's very, very true. But so these books, well, we've just talked about two of them that may be fake, but there's all kinds of stuff that may never have literally even ever happened. Like Amelia Earhart maybe didn't even fly around the world or maybe... Uh, you know, if they didn't go to the moon, maybe there's no Amelia Earhart. Maybe there's no Hansen that explored the North Pole. Maybe there's no uh, Picard that went up in a time capsule. Maybe nothing that we've ever been told has ever been really true. It's just a scam. I just got an article somebody sent me about Alex Jones, and people are talking about how he could be controlled opposition. So, they're pretending they don't like him. They're 
pretending to ban him, but somehow or another he's on a network, a radio network, with a televised, nationally uh, syndicated radio program that's reaching millions of people. I was listening a, the other day, let's turn the radio on, talk radio, and there's Alex Jones on the radio. He's not banned. He gets millions of people listening every day on the radio. They pay him a lot of money for that. And guess what? His network, the, the radio network that sponsors him, is the exact same network that sponsors Joe Rogan. Same one that sponsors um, Bill Hicks before he supposedly got cancer and died, pancreatic cancer. And then the very same year, uh, Alex Jones arrived on the scene. But there's a whole bunch of individuals, like the whole radio network, like Rosh Limbaugh. You'll find that they have a similar programming. Rush Limbaugh was like a comedian type thing and there was background noises and comedic screeches and sounds and noises and little skits in the background of the radio. This goes on to Alex Jones as well. He's an actor. He stamp, jumps up and down, pretends he's crazy. But while he's acting crazy, he's telling the world all these great and amazing crews. Well, you take it with a grain of salt because he's controlled opposition. They want you to think that the people who speak the truth are crazy. So everything you see on television, everything, everything on the radio, everything in the newspaper, they're all owned, of course, by the same billionaire, Rothschild, Rockefeller bankers. So you can't expect that any of this stuff is going to be true. And I'm thinking that it's complete propaganda, everything we're being told. We have no idea how many billionaires there are. We have, I don't think there are any billionaires. I think it's just this one family that owns everything. And... They appoint certain individuals like Billy Gates and Elon, their children, right, to with the younger generation to be the face on their enterprise. And now they're like, oh, he's a genius. Wow, it's amazing. You know, all these these young kids came out of Liverpool today and they're on the Ed Sullivan show. And now everybody's throwing their panties at, at the stage and they're playing some kind of crazy music. Everybody loves it. Well, no, they're just telling us that we love it. They're showing us pictures of people throwing their panties on stage and we're thinking, oh my goodness, I guess everybody loves it. Oh, look at Tom Jones. Oh, let's throw my panties on. See, this is just propaganda. They make the people that we claim we love, like Prince and Michael Jackson, both Jehovah's Witnesses, they were used uh, to bring in minorities because they knew they needed people out there to soften the opposition, to make them likable, to, to, you know, to make the people not be frightened. So they take, and they take Kanye West and they say he's a Christian. And then they say, oh, by the way, flash some, you know, signs or symbols of the Illuminati. Because we've got to let these people think that it's all right. After all, if Kanye West and little Kim can do it, then it must be that it's not a big deal. These are our friends. Don't be scared. Everything's fine. By the way, guys, I want to point out that the idea that things change, we were talking about the other day how came to America, they claimed that, oh, we're not going to have kings here. Well, now we've got presidents that are appointed just like the ancient ones did. They had the... Uh, the bishops or the high up pontifex maximus who would have a college of priests and they would themselves vote on who would chair the, the, the round circle or whatever. This is what they still do today. The Jesuit priests vote in the next pope or the cardinals vote the next pope or however they do that. And But, well, the cardinals are, are supposedly the ones who vote on the pope, but they're only given certain uh, people that they're allowed to vote on by the, the Jesuit priesthood, which is the, the mafia CIA that's running the whole world that, that's in a little island called the Isle of Malta. So it's all a big scam. They're not, we're not voting in anyway, anybody. They're just putting them in. Donald Trump works for them. They would never allow him in there if he didn't work for them. But they have the good cop, bad cop, so they pretend that one half of the world hates him and the other half loves him. This is... They're doing this on purpose. They, the, the, the bad guys are 
doing everything wrong. We hate them. They're putting that face of evil and ignorance and incompetence on the Democrats right now. And we're going to be so glad to get them out of there because we think that we're going to blame all of our problems on these stupid socialists when they're not the problem. They're just playing the bad guy. They're pretending to hate Trump and Elon when they make this big mess and get us into world war and, and you know get through all of this crisis and tribulation and famine, then Trump and Elon will come riding in on their white horse. This is what they have planned for us. So they created the Constitution and this thing called America, or, well, maybe some good guys did that, and this is a... A good thing, you know, if we didn't have the Constitution, our rights and our liberties, where would we be? So that's all good. And I do believe that some very good people like Washington and Jefferson stuff did that. But at the same time, in 1776, over in Bavaria, Adam Weshap was starting the Illuminati. See, there's a plan to try and destroy our liberty. So when they came to America, they told us, well, I guess we're defeated. We, we you know, more royal blood, no more kings. No more religion. We're not going to be under the Pope anymore. We're all free. Uh, they're still doing it exactly the same way. You go to a judge, you have to get down and grovel and say, Yes, sir, Your Honor. Oh, Your Majesty. They're wearing the black robes. They're convicting us, putting us in jail. Remember when there was a thing called slavery and now we don't have to be slaves anymore? Guess what? They just changed the name. It's not called slavery anymore. It's called work. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And they give you a stipend. You, you're barely, you, you know, they give you a couple dollars. You can live in your car while you work for them and do all the labor. That's how it works. You're just slavery. You're, you know, when you're, you ever notice that when you're born, your birth certificate is on bond paper. When you get a divorce, it's on bond paper. When you get married, it's on bond paper. What is bond paper? Nobody's ever explained this to anybody. Bond is a bondage. It means slavery. Your papers that you must sign because you're an indentured slave, you're being you're you're contracting for work as a slave. You're bound as a slave. If you don't pay off that debt, you'll go to jail. You're you've signed a bond. What is a bond? Well, let's say you're arrested and they put you in jail and they say, well, you can bond out. What does bond out mean? It means you've got to sign a contract that says you'll show up. If you don't, we can do whatever we want and put you in prison or whatever the fine is for that. But you are bound. You're in bondage. You signed your name at the bottom line. Now you're in a contract and you must fulfill the contract. You're a slave. You're an indentured slave working for your master until you pay it off. Then you can go free. But you see, we never go free because we keep signing these contracts to buy a car, to buy a house, buy a land. It's never over. We actually signed the bond paper when we're born and they slap you on the butt. And now you're an indentured slave. That's what this world is. It's not just women. We've talked a lot about, on this channel, we've talked a lot about the biblical thing called marriage. Most people think it's a, a lovely little thing that we get together and we get married and la 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 and we raise children. It's wonderful, right? Well, marriage, the only thing you can find about that in the Old Testament is Exodus 21 7, where it describes what this thing is. They didn't call it marriage, um, they called it slavery. It says, When you sell your daughter as a slave, she shall never go free, as do the others. Hebrew slave. See, a Hebrew slave could be sold into slavery. Uh, if he owed somebody money or if he had to pay something, they could make a contract and he could work it off. That's called work, right? But that's also called slavery. All, even, even the, the slaves that were slaves by virtue of their, their, their race or whatever, like certain tribes were all slaves and other tribes they just had to genocide under the old covenant. But, the ones that were slaves um, got that way but somehow or another because there was a debt owed to Jehovah by their ancestor or something. This particular son did something that Jehovah didn't like and so he declared them a slave and all their children from thereafter, right? 
I guess. It's never really explained why Yahweh decided to make certain nations slaves and others deserve to be genocide and some of them, you know, some have speculated. But, remember, that's only in Judaism. That's only in the the lower tribes, the southern tribes of Israel, Judah and Benjamin, who went by the laws of Yahweh. The ten tribes worshipped at Bethel and they believed in the goddess and many other deities. We're going to get into that tomorrow. We're going to talk about the uh, Vestal virgins and where they came from and how they literally were part of a group of individuals. Their, their religion was that they had 12 deities on Mount Olympus. And each of the deities had their own like little religion or their little shrines. And each of them were worshipped for different reasons. And they were kind of in a circuit around Rome. Rome was set up to where there was a Pontibus Maximus and there was a college of bishops or priests. And they had several groups of priests. They had the flames, we had they had the augurs, and they had the uh the Vestal Virgins. And there were as many women that ruled over Rome as there were men, and they could make law, they could free somebody, like we have some of these same powers that the president has today that that comes from this. But anyway, I digress, but it wasn't a worldwide thing that everybody should be slaves, of course. This is something we got from the Old Testament. But we're being enslaved as we speak. The government that we live under is the government of the Old Testament of courts, right? Temples. They say we don't have to be religious. We've separated politics from religion now. That's not true. See, religion was a government. They had civil law and moral law, but you they told you what to do and you did it. They had armies and they had policemen and they told you to do it and if you didn't do it, you went to jail or they executed you. Same thing going on now. We have prisons. Why? Who you have to do what they say. It's the same thing. It's not religious or, or, or secular or whatever. It's all the same. You're not allowed to lie or steal or murder or do any of these things. These are laws that you have to keep. You go to the judge and say, oh, your majesty, you know, that's you grovel. They're above you. You get nothing. You're a slave. You're under contract. You must do your job. So everything we've been told is a lie. We're all slaves. And everything they're telling us is a lie and this whole system of religion was created to pull it over on the masses jesus never started religion guys i believe in jesus but jesus said you don't need a man to teach you but he said i'm going to give you the holy spirit and she's going to teach you all things you need to know in the hour in which you need to know it but call no man your father call no man your rabbi so we are under a large terribly large delusion there is no truth in the media. Now, besides the fact that I don't believe that Elon Musk actually has $200 billion, or I should say Errol Musk, I don't believe that. Um, well, I, I believe that more than I would believe he has $2 million. And I believe he has $200 billion more than I would believe that he only has $20 million. And here's why. I think he probably does have somewhere around 200 billion or many, maybe much more. These guys could have a lot more than they're letting on. They're not going to tell us how much they have, right? So if they've got that kind of money, they can regulate it with their brother over at the Goggle Brothers to put it into the algorithms that whatever they want to tell the world that's how much they have, they'll tell us and then they'll just put it in there and, and we'll believe it. Same with Trump. He says, I got this much or that much and He's got other money in offshore accounts or whatever. We don't know how much he's got. What we do know he's got a the, the tallest building, skyscraper, in just about every major city, whether it's India, Britain, America, you know, Russia, wherever, all around the world, Saudi Arabia, different places around the world. He's got these huge buildings that each building could be worth a billion dollars. So it's ridiculous. It's just the infrastructure alone, Trump's got a lot more money than what he's saying. And he owns those buildings. So... Um, but, so I don't believe the figure that we're hearing, but what I really believe is that 
Elon Musk could not have made $200 billion out of thin air because he's so smart and good looking. So I do believe like Trump was, you know, given money by his dad and we don't know the half of it. I mean, what propelled Trump to this amazing place where he's at, where he's like president of the world and everybody considers him this great businessman, a billionaire, right? What got him to that? Was it because he was a genius? No, Trump's not a genius. Oh, they say because he works so hard and he's got so much integrity and he's just, you know, he's savvy with, with business. That's not it either. Guys, these guys are nobodies. You know, like Bush got low grades in, in college and stuff like this. These guys aren't bright. So they're just telling us what they want us to believe. So I would say that the fact that Elon is in the position that he's in, his dad must be in a very, very, very big position. I doubt whether he just handed everything over to his son or maybe he just put all his money into his account, financed him or whatever, and they own the money together. It's a family trust. I don't know. But whatever, I'm sure that the daddy, the papa, is the one that's in charge. Somebody that's really running the world doesn't really always want to be front and center stage. They want sometimes their, their children to be the face of what they're doing. And you'll see that with Trump too, with his kids. But, um, but here's the real evidence that Errol musk has a lot more money than what we're being told probably more money money than elon look at this meet elon's lesser known millionaire siblings so this is elon musk's family his brother i guess and his sister but kimball musk has a net worth of 700 million or 974 million as of 2021 I'm sure by 2022, that's gone up. She's probably got at least a billion. Where do you suppose that this Kimball Musk got her money? Do you think, well, I'm sure her, her brother Elon got a lot of money. He might have helped her. Maybe he gave her some money. How about a million or something like that? But not a billion. I'm sure he didn't just give his sister a billion dollars. It's, and, and it can't be possible that every one of these individuals in this family are all geniuses and, and you know, somehow or another just know how to make billions of dollars. Every one of them. This is supposed to be some sort of a, an amazing feat, we're being told, that Elon Musk is just some genius. He's just some, he just came out of nowhere. His dad's not even that rich, but he's just made this fortune because he's so amazing and humble and great. But yet, they don't tell you his sister is also a genius and somehow has achieved status as a billionaire. Well, who else? Meet Tosca Musk, this lady here. How much does she have? Her net worth in 2018 was 169 million, 235 million. That was in 2018. I don't know why they're not telling us what she has now. Um, but the point is, is she's probably getting up there close to a billion by now too. They've all got lots of money. Now, I, you've got two or three choices. Either everybody in that family watched their dad, who was just a, um, some sort of a engineer. I think they say he's an electromechanical engineer. So I guess that's better than an engineer. And, you know, made a little money, became kind of a millionaire, loaned a little money to his son, and now his son just accidentally for, you know, this doesn't happen, but very rare in the universe that somebody becomes a billionaire. I mean, it's very, it's not, it's not something you just do by accident, right? You have to have somebody connected. You've got to have somebody over there at the Rothschild Bank helping you, right? So, it would stand to reason if they're trying to help Elon that they might help his sisters and his brother. But why would they, you know, want to help his sister and his brother? Wouldn't it sound more likely that they helped, that, that they're connected with the dad, Errol? And by virtue of the dad, all the siblings have all this other money. That's what I'm thinking. So... This just tells you that there's a cover-up. 
And I don't see it just as one family. I see it as the way it works. Like I said, we could go through the same arguments with Donald Trump and other various people. Um, we're not getting the full explanation of how much these guys have. According to the news and Forbes magazine and all this, ever since this whole thingy thing started, we know that it was predicted by Bill Gates. He believed it was going to happen so bad. He warned us all. Talked about depopulation. Put all his money in pharma. And all of a sudden now, his, well, his um, enterprise or his, this little game that whatever it is he was trying to do, it seemed to have worked because most of the world has now gotten the thingy thing. So he should have made a lot of money. But all of a sudden his money's gone down. Right? He took money, Bill Gates took money out of his Microsoft, like sold some stocks or whatever, apparently, so he could put that money into pharma and got some patents on some biotechnology and some, some you know, Mark of the Beast stuff, right? Why would, would you think Bill Gates would do that and then lose money? Especially since over the last two and a half, three years now, the every, everything's going to biotech, pharma, and everything. There's no way he could have lost any money. We know that his plan, because he said so, his plan was going to be that he would make, you know, it would be the best investment he said that he'd ever made, investing in the pharma. And yet, on paper, he's supposedly losing money. And all of a sudden, this one guy, remember this happened, Bill Gates was the richest man in the world, now all of a sudden, this Jeff Bezos come along, he just whoop, went right up a passed him and soared way up to about 200 billion. And I'm like, who is this Jeff Bezos? Well, he had Amazon. It was a, a company that he was assigned as the leader of, the CEO. They, they assign these companies, you know. I mean, there's patterns here, guys, that nobody's paying attention to. See, we we're like, oh, this young genius just invented Microsoft. He's just a kid, oh my gosh, down in his parents' basement. No, his mother was set on the board of IBM. They created another division of the computer or the one world government computer department and placed one of the lineal descendants of, you know, the royal bloodline on the throne of that department. Same thing happened a few years later. Now, all of a sudden, there's a company called Amazon and people are like, wow, what a genius that Jeff Bezos. He just figured out that, that there was a market for selling things online. Like, wait a minute. Wasn't Elon Musk involved with PayPal and the eBay? And they had this all planned. They didn't just like invent it and they're just so smart, you know. What they did was they had a plan at the Rockefeller Foundation, at the round table, you know, at, at the Isle of Malta and the Jesuit priest, you know, ordered it. And they said, listen, we're going to expand, take away all of the enterprise and the right to commerce and buy and sell. We're not allowed to have that anymore with the people. We're going to have a monopoly. We're going to own and control everything. We're going to tell them what to eat. We're going to tell them what to wear. We're going to not let them run around and drive anymore. We're going to... Listen, guys, when the when the fuel goes out, and it will, because they don't want us peons running around driving. We can't afford electric cars. So you, you can keep your car, but you won't have any gas when the tribulation comes. You won't be able to use it. And if there is any gas out in a tank somewhere in the back, people are going to come with guns and take it. That and your food. This is like Mad Max. They patterned the movie Mad Max after what they're planning right now. So they know. They did this on purpose. They said, look, Tesla or <laughs> Elon, go ahead and make electric cars, which nobody will be able to afford except the rich. We'll get our electric cars because we got money. That way we can still have transportation and run around and do our thing and live in luxury and live in our you know, penthouses and stuff like that. We can dry, fly in airplanes. There'll be plenty of fuel for that, right? There'll be electric airplanes or some stupid thing. But the peons, we won't be allowed to go anywhere. No more gas. That solves the global warming problem, which was just a hoax. They didn't want us running around, us peasants. We're taking up too much space. They'll just, you know, if we if we get stuck somewhere and we can't drive, we'll, we'll die of loneliness and, and depression. And then they'll just give us more of their pharma. This is part of the plan. Oh, you're sick, huh? And they'll give us the pharma thing, see, which is, you know, part of the P-L-A-N, get it? Because you won't last long after that. 
So, yeah, I mean, they had planned on making... I mean, you know, they earlier before Amazon, they had the, the Walmart. They had it all in the big distribution center. Closed down the, the stores and the shops, the department store, all this stuff. Closed that all down. We'll just do it all at one big distribution center called Walmart, you know. But... That's being phased out now. We're going to go to Amazon and eBay or whatever where you buy it online and they deliver it with a drone to your door. This is all planned. So it's, it's a monopoly and the people that own these companies are the children of the highest billionaires. Guaranteed. Errol Musk is the guy with all the money. And by the way, Donald Trump, I believe, has more money than all of the others. Like I've said, you don't have a skyscraper, the tallest building in the center of every major city in the, in the world, in every country, and not be the richest person in the world. There's a Trump Tower in every, you know, Chicago, got one in New York, and Las Vegas, and, you know, Saudi Arabia, and, and all over the world, India, and all over the world, I don't even know where he's got, Japan, he's got these buildings all over the world, uh, uh, Indonesia, and so forth. And each one of these buildings are worth like a billion dollars, and they say he's only got three billion give me a break. What is behind that man that he has so much money that he could just buy this big old building? What do you put in the building? Right? Office space for what? You know, what is he housing? Oh, oh, it's a department complex, right? He's renting it out. I don't think so, guys. He's got his name at the top of every city. I mean, think about it. He, he bought the Empire State Building. Now, that was owned by the richest person in the world. It's the Empire State, right? And, and the building says that's the person who owns the world. Trump bought the Empire State Building and then bought another piece of land not far from it across the street and, you know, on Fifth Avenue and built another tower and then another tower over by Rockefeller. To, not to be outdone by Mr. Rockefeller, he makes the Trump Plaza next to the Rockefeller Plaza next to the United Nations building next to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society building. It's all engineered, friends, as a friend of mine would like to say all the time. They're all just kind of assigned this. Bill Gates was a young man when he was handed Microsoft. His mother said on the board of IBM. So, it's funny that Jeff Bezos soared up to $200 billion and then just sort of leveled out. And then now here comes another one, Elon Musk. And he went all the way up to about 250 I mean, at some point he was closer to $300 billion. And then supposedly he leveled off and went back down to around $200 billion. Now, I don't think any of this is real. I think their money's increasing every day because Tesla's making electric cars right now. And while that's going on, Ford's no longer making gas cars. Chevy and Volvo and all these other big car companies, Dodge, they're not making gas cars anymore. They're going to electric cars. They're going to have to shift gears and it, they're going to, not ever going to be able to compete with Tesla, who's already full scale blowing past the competition. There's no way. He, he, should, he should double, triple his money within the next five years. But supposedly he's losing money. Plus the SpaceX thing. And he's talking about the, the Neuralink and all the stuff that supposedly, you know, uh, the SpaceX got the help of Trump. And, and also the, um, the new uh, military operation, Space Force, which is interesting because Elon Musk called his operation SpaceX. And Trump makes Space Force, like the Air Force, right? And... Then they give him, even after Trump leaves office, they needed somebody to put satellites in the air and help them with space travel. So Elon won this bidding war with Jeff Bezos. I don't know who else was bidding on it, but they, they wanted this government contract to do something with the space industry and NASA and so forth. And they gave it to Elon, which made, should have made him billions more. So, something's not adding up here, friends. Oh, look at this. I just now, somehow or another, accidentally clicked that button, what Errol Musk is worth again. And this time it says, as of September 2nd, 2020, his net worth was estimated by Forbes to be US $93.3 billion. Okay, so now he's got $100 billion in 2020. It's 2022 now. I'm sure he's doubled that. 
So I think the 200 billion may be the actual correct um, number. But see, nobody's telling us that Elon Musk's dad might have as much money as he does. And I think this is a big deal, that we're not being told this. And because they have so, so much money, they can make a deal with the Goggle Brothers to change the algorithm so you never know how much they've got. Isn't that crazy? But, so then I got to poking around and I found this. This is a um, article, is Elon Musk comes from a family of entrepreneurs. And here's who they are. So you go down real quick, and the first two are the ones we are already mentioned. May and uh, Tosca Musk. Then it goes, Russ, Peter, and Lyndon Reeve, first cousins of the Musk clan, also worked in the tech industry. They founded software company Evergreen in 1999 and sold it to Dell for 121, or 120 million in 2007. Russ is now the CEO and co-founder of Super Uber, an art and technical production company. Lyndon and Peter co-founded SolarCity, which Tesla acquired in 2016 for 2.6 billion. Wow. Though the family's recent achievements in business are more widely known, their innovative attitude stems back to Elon's great-grandmother, Dr. Almeida Haldeman Wilson, who was Canada's first ever chiropractor. Her son Joshua Haldeman followed her in her footsteps and studied chiropractic medicine and was a politician and famed explorer. Well, a famous explorer and a politician. Isn't that interesting in their genealogy? And, and notice that they're, they're, they're all over the world. Like, like this is Canada. So they got family in Canada. They've lived in Australia. They've lived in South Africa. That's where Errol Musk, his dad, is living now. is in South Africa. So they just travel all over, the road, all over the world. They get billions of dollars coming out their ears. Every business venture they touch just turns to gold. They got resorts all over the world, you know. Probably between the few of them, that the family, you know. They've got property, probably got property all over the world like, like Trump does, right? So, I looked up this Haldeman, which would be his grandfather. Before Elon Musk was thinking about Mars and electric cars, he was doing chores on a Saskatchewan farm. This guy's lived in Saskatchewan, Canada, South Africa, Australia. I don't know where he's from, but I'll give you a clue. It's probably there in Bavaria. But let me show you something here. During their time in South Africa, the Haldeman family embarked on adventures that sound like they're straight out of the Indiana Jones movie or an episode of Johnny Quest. Haldeman moved his family to the country from Regina, Saskatchewan. The family went on to numerous excursions into the wilderness and searched for the legendary lost city of the Kalahari Desert. The Haldemans made an annual trek, they did this every year, into the uncharted wilderness in search of the lost city of the Kalahari Desert. The legend involves a theory that the ruins of a long forgotten city exist somewhere in the desert. See, this isn't just some recreational hobby. This guy sported himself to be some kind of Indiana Jones, some famous explorer. People don't become great famous explorer unless they're on a mission sent by a king or, or they're a billionaire and they're trying to uh, scout out another way to get some land where they can suck some oil out of the ground and, and, and build an empire or something. He was looking for a place to build his empire in South Africa, which is where he ends up giving birth to Elon Musk's mother who marries another billionaire from Bavaria and all of the family is billionaires. See? So, you're not being told the truth. So, there's uh, Tiffany Trump, dubbed the forgotten Trump child, set to increase her worth when she marries businessman and billionaire heir Michael Boulot. Boulet, or whatever that's, I don't know how to pronounce that. Melania isn't the richest when compared to Donald's ex-wife, Ivana, who got... U.S. $14 million, a mansion, and a Trump Tower flat in the divorce settlement. 
It's now worth 100 million. Tiffany Trump, 10 million. Melania Trump. I mean, they all got millions and millions and millions and millions. 600,000 Mercedes. But look at this. Donald Trump Jr., his net worth is 300 million. But that's quite a bit of money right there. And, you know, he's got other kids. You sure, I'm sure they're all in the millions. So how much does Donald himself really have? I'm just going to tell you what they're saying. I hadn't really looked for a while. I thought probably his money had been going down uh, because it's like ever supposedly everybody just hated the guy, you know, and they weren't going to they were going to boycott everything. So it says, how rich is Donald Trump really? CNN, of course, they don't like Donald Trump. So if they say he's got a certain amount of money, it's probably a lot more than what they're saying. But CNN says, earlier this week, Donald Trump sent the New York Times an email. In it, he claimed that he was very rich, pointing to a June 30th, 2014 statement of financial condition. That said, he was worth $5.8 in the year before he started running for president. That's a much bigger... Talk about Mandela effect. I very clearly remember when Donald Trump was running for president um, against Hillary... Chris Wallace on the debate floor said that Forbes magazine said he had only $3 billion. And here it's saying that no, now it's $5.8 billion the year before he started running for president. But as the Times noted, then Trump declared his candidacy in 2015. He said that a summary of net worth as of June 30th, 2014 put his total wealth at 8.7 billion. Now I never heard of anything like that that they admitted to until now. A month after that, Trump's campaign put out another statement on his wealth and it read in part, real estate values in New York City, San Francisco, Miami, and many other places where he owns property have gone up considerably during his period of time. His debt is very small percentage of value and at very low interest rates. As of this date, Mr. Trump's net worth is in excess of $10 billion. Well, again, I think he has a lot more than that. But I'm just pointing out that you couldn't find out what any of these guys had if you were going to actually read Forbes magazine or go on the internet or actually look it up. Because every time you look it up, they're going to tell you something different. And I guarantee you that Trump does not want people to know. I don't believe that he has this kind of power, this mesmerizing power over the world that he just waltzes in there uh, changes the guy. Everybody's against him and hates him. And he, you know, I, I think it's just that they're promoting him. The late night shows are promoting him by saying all kinds of scandalous things that are really ridiculous. And then they got the the Biden, the old man, Mr. Magoo, and the old toothless lady with the wig that's supposed to be running Congress. They got them running around, you know, drunk and stumbling and falling over, and they can't talk. And, and, and they're, they're promoting riots and wars and, and spending and everything. Of course, everybody's going to love Trump. Trump spent, I don't know how many years with that show, The Apprentice, you know, promoting himself as the guy to come in and save the world. Friends, I'm just saying, everything we're seeing on the news is a lie. But look at this. Microsoft's founder, Gates, the fourth richest person in the world, Shed fifteen billion in net worth since January, while Google founder Page lost more than twenty six billion of his net worth. Well, they're all just losing money. How could that be? I mean, he's he's just losing it like you wouldn't believe. He's down to like a hundred billion now or something. My goodness, what's he gonna do? How is he gonna make ends meet? I'm kind of worried about this guy losing all that money. But um. If Bill Gates is losing all his money, um, I wonder what's going on. Because uh, take a look at this. Mark Zuckerberg is teaming up with Bill Gates to try and find a drug to treat that thing. And uh, the $25 million gift is Zuckerberg's biggest donation yet to tackle the thing. Oh, that's why they're going broke. They're giving all their billions to help save the world, the little children. Oh, look at these heroes, man. My goodness. Little Zuckerberg is shorter than his wife. She's from 
Looks like she's from China. I don't know. What is he that? Is he that short? He looks like about 5'2 there. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, he's such a big hero. I'm just so excited to see this guy do this amazing thing for the world, right? So, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife Priscilla Chan, is that why the Chinese are taking over the world? Because they're marrying our CEOs and sending the money over there? I don't know. Well, you know, China is like an entire slave force, right? There's millions of people that work for nothing. So, these billionaires want to make an investment over there. So, they marry a wife from there so that when they go there and do uh, tours or give talks or something to the crowds, they say, oh, look at my, my wife. See, we're one of you. Well, it's just kind of like Melania. It's just the model that they carry around with them. It seems like when you're a billionaire, you just go ahead and pretty much purchase your wife. Well, that's the way they used to do it anyway. That's what they believe in doing, so... I guess it goes along with their beliefs, but uh, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, a philanthropy run by the couple. That's what Bill Gates says he's doing. He's into philanthropy now. I guess that's another word for he's into charity, right? He's got all his money, so he's just giving away his money and, and trying to help people, right? Because people are sick everywhere and they're dying. And now he's involved and now there's more people dying, right? So now he's, I guess he's going to have to get involved even more now and put more money into this. But for some reason, he all of his money is just going down the tube. He invested all this money, said it was the best investment he'd ever made. I heard him say that his investments were worth like $200 billion. Okay. And now here we are, almost two and a half, three years later, and he's, his money's going down. This doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, and then Facebook guy. Remember they were saying how his money's going down too? Like everybody's leaving Facebook to go to Rumble or something? I don't know. Trump's supposedly making all kinds of money off of this new truth uh, forum thing he's got. But see, I don't believe in any of this stuff, to be honest with you. But, uh, oh, wow. He's got a book out, I guess. How to Prevent the Next One. Oh, man. He's even selling books and he's going broke. And they've done everything in, in their power. they got control of the media trying to force this on us. Right? And he's losing money. Wow. What a philanthropist. <laughs> Woo. I'm just so enamored. This this man is making my heart go bitter batter. Oh, man. He's so handsome, too, isn't he? Those big old glasses. Kind of like Woody Allen kind of thing, you know? Uh, yeah, they all do that. I don't know what that is. I mean, maybe they're trying to show how smart they are. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go, guys. I just, you know, I'm just, it's just the ramblings of some guy here in Alabama. Don't pay much mind to me. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.